Previously, we looked at what mics are, what all the switches are, and looked at some different types of mics. This time, we're going to look at how to use your microphones and some tips on how to get the best results. So you've begged, borrowed, or bought your first microphone. Firstly, we'll need to get it plugged in and make sure it's working. As we mentioned in the how to choose and use your audio interface show, you have to plug your mic into your preamp or audio interface with an XL or lead. You'll also need to check that the mic is getting phantom power if it requires it. Your amp or interface should now be seeing the signal from your mic. We also went through how your interface should be set up in your DAW or digital audio workstation. We're currently using Audacity, a free audio software package to learn the basics of audio software before we advance into the more professional packages. We'll be going over the main aspects of Audacity in a later show. Now that you have your mic working, let's look at a couple of ways to get the best possible results. The first thing you need to be aware of is the proximity of the mic. Proximity is the position of the mic relative to the source. Is it too far away or too close to the thing you want to record? For example, recording a voiceover. Having the mic too far away from the voice will result in a really low signal going to your recording equipment. It will also pick up a lot of the room reverb. Both can affect the quality of the recording. With voice, you need to be nicely close to the source, but not too close as to have the recordings distort. If the proximity of the mic is directly in front of the mouth with no pop shield, then you will get plosives. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. You may also pick up louder mouth clicks if the mic is really close. As with everything we're talking about in this show, it's worth experimenting with the proximity of your mics for your specific recording needs. I'm going to let you into a little secret. If your artist has a very clicky mouth, then get them to chew on a green apple. The acids in the green apple cut down on the sugars in the saliva and reduce the clicks hugely. Proximity of the mic can also be used for creative purposes. Consider a guitar amplifier, though firstly, the signal of a guitar amp can be very strong. So you'll be turning your preamp down or putting a pad on your mic to be able to record it safely. Now, a lot of people like the sound of their amp, so they'll mic it really closely. But if you bring the mic away from your amp, then you can pick up a nice amount of the room reverberation. With vocal recordings of choirs, the mics are generally positioned a distance from the choir. To pick up as much reverb from the room as the choir itself, to give it that big vocal sound. There's a thing called signal to noise ratio. This is the ratio between the good sound coming from the mic and any other undesirable noise on the mic signal. You can ensure that you have the best signal to noise ratio on your recordings with a few simple tips. Again, proximity. If you have a good recording level with close proximity, then the signal to noise ratio will be on the healthy side. More the sound you want, and less of the dirt. Pushing the level of your preamp too much can cause the electrical noise to increase. Now you have lots of noise on your signal. This coupled with your mics missing the source, you're getting a whole lot of noise and not enough of the good stuff going onto your recordings. When recording, there are a couple of things you'll need to protect those recordings. First things first, a pop shield. To protect your recordings from low frequency bangs and pops caused by the person pronouncing P's and B's into the mic. Plosives. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Next, hand movement through the mic. You need a microphone suspension mount. They prevent big shocks or movements or noises through the physical mic, which leave big bangs and rumbles on your recordings. And this includes handheld recorders with built-in mics. Get a mic stand, 
There are lots of versions out there. Get one. Not only do they isolate the mic from ground rumble, but leave your hands free to fix your hair on stage. Recording is such a broad discipline. There are so many things to record in so many ways. If you have specific questions about your settings for your recordings, put them in the comments below. I'll answer them there. We've covered a lot in this episode already, but if you want us to cover any of the basics of sound recording or production, put your questions in the comments below. I'm Keith Alexander and you've been watching Adorama TV. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV by hitting the bell. Tell us what you think. You can like, you can comment, or you can share this video. And please come by the Adorama Learning Center for more great information and advice.